first SpaceX spacewalk mission launches in a week. This will be epic. Here's what SpaceX CEO Elon Musk had to say about SpaceX's upcoming special mission, Polaris Dawn. As scheduled for August 26th, Polaris Dawn is set to make history as the first all-civilian crew to attempt a spacewalk, paving a new era for future space tourism and multiplanetary exploration. As we count down to launch, SpaceX has recently fired the public up with upgrades on key components serving the first spacewalk, including Dragon and Spacesuit. Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. We are just several days away from SpaceX's first attempt at a spacewalk. Its next private mission from Florida, Polaris Dawn, will launch on August 26th with the four-person crew including billionaire and Shift 4 founder Jared Isaacman, his colleague Scott Petit, and a pair of SpaceX employees, Anna Menon and Sarah Gillis. The Polaris Dawn mission is the first of three flights Isaacman purchased from SpaceX in 2022 for his human spaceflight effort known as the Polaris program. Unlike the normal mission, the multi-day trip isn't headed to a destination, but instead will be a free-flying mission tracing orbits. The crew will go far from Earth to a very high altitude that humans haven't gone to in 50-plus years. Isakman hopes that all four of the crew will perform the spacewalk because there's no airlock in Dragon and it's being vented down to vacuum inside the spacecraft. Namely, Isaac Mann and Gillis will journey outside of Dragon while Poteet and Menon stay inside as support. To make it possible, SpaceX has conducted an important test with its vehicle, Dragon. Recently, a new picture leaked on X shows the upgraded Crew Dragon for Polaris looks like it had to do a new thermal vacuum test. The thermal vacuum test on the spacecraft is a critical evaluation process designed to ensure the spacecraft can withstand the extreme conditions of space. This test simulates the vacuum of space and the temperature fluctuations that occur in low Earth orbit (LEO). A typical thermal vacuum test for the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft lasts for at least a handful of weeks. Clearly, if Polaris's Dragon goes this way, this will further delay the program's timeline. It's not fun at all. Hopefully, the test just operates for a few days. Before Four, the vehicle has also experienced massive upgrades. As part of modifying the Dragon to meet the mission requirements, there were upgrades to the life support system to increase the amount of oxygen that can be fed to the suit. The ship's environmental sensing suite was also upgraded to properly monitor the crew during their journey. SpaceX has also added a new nitrogen repressurization system that will repressurize the Dragon following the spacewalk. SpaceX has already depressurized and repressurized Crew Dragon on Earth to test its systems and remove chemicals before the mission. Another upgrade is on the forward module, called the Skywalker. It will serve as a handhold and foothold for the crew during their space foray. Additional handhelds have been added on the hatch for interior operations, with a new motor on the forward hatch added as well. Besides, SpaceX and Polaris teams have spent the past few years building an entirely new suit specifically for this mission. The EVA suits are night and day from the original IVA suits. They contain more than a dozen layers of MLI, redundancy on seals, vents, valves, new visor, lots of rotators and joints, HUD, camera. They are very rigid when pressurized, as are all EVA suits. We have rotator joints and stitching throughout the suit for mobility, and the primary purpose of the EVA operation is to gather data on suit performance. It is definitely not a suit for Mars, but at least the journey has begun to make it that way, Isikman tweeted. They started with what looked like an IVA suit used for intravehicular activity. They went through the design iteration to ultimately arrive at where they are today, which is really decent dexterity in the fingers. Very good mobility, good flexibility, even down to the knees and waist. The suit's helmet is upgraded with an exterior coating that acts like a sun visor, along with a camera and heads-up display that provides information on the status of the suit during the spacewalk. Umbilicals provide life support for the suits. For the boots, designers utilized the same temperature-resilient material found in the Falcon 9 rocket's inner stage and Dragon capsule's trunk. This suggests that SpaceX is leveraging materials from its existing rocket technology to enhance the functionality and safety of the new EVA suits. The specific material mentioned is designed to withstand extreme temperatures, which is essential for both the rocket components and the EVA suits used in spacewalks. 
This approach reflects SpaceX's strategy of integrating proven materials and technologies from its spacecraft and launch systems into new applications, ensuring reliability and performance in the harsh environment of space. Isaacman said the EVA suits are the results of hundreds of hours of testing different materials over the years. Obviously, this is just the first generation of the suit, and it's not the best yet. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk also highlighted, our next-gen spacesuit will be even better. To get there, testing the suit in the upcoming mission should be the centerpiece. So our primary goal is learn as much as we can about the suit, Isaacman said. Like developing a rocket, SpaceX's brand new suit must also experience iterative testing. Applying iterative development to the spacesuits seems like a really good idea considering all the things that will be asked of them over the next decades. Everything is about building the next generation. We're continuing to iterate on this suit design so that SpaceX can have hundreds or thousands someday for the moon, Mars, working in low Earth orbit, and what have you. Building a new EVA suit is no easy task, Isikman added. Even some joke that for any of Elon's advanced products, such as the Starship rocket, you get his best ideal one in the third version. Well, hopefully we'll see the best version of this suit in the third generation. So how about you? Do you believe that the suit's third version will be the best? Let's comment yes exactly in the section below. Not only the hardware, but also the crew also needs upgrades in terms of skills and psychology. You know all of them are not professional astronauts. Isaac Mann said he understands that going for a spacewalk means he and his crew will be surrounded by death, a moment for which they've been training extensively. The only thing that comes close to that is the vacuum chamber, and that's where you're pretty much feeling as close as it's like to be in the vacuum conditions or space. That definitely gives you the actual sensations of the pressure changes and the temperature changes, as well as just the psychological stressors of being in a very harsh environment, Isaacman said. The quartet has undergone intensive training, some 2,000 hours in a simulator, centrifuge sessions, scuba diving, skydiving, and climbing the Cotopaxi volcano in Ecuador. I can tell you without a doubt this has been some of the most challenging training that I've ever experienced, said Potit, who flew fighter jets for 20 years in the U.S. Air Force. The mission has three main objectives, in addition to the 40 or so experiments that will be conducted on board. The first is to reach an altitude of 1,400 kilometers, the furthest distance for a space crew since the Apollo lunar missions. Since those missions included only men, Gillis and Menon will become the two women to have traveled the farthest from Earth. By comparison, the International Space Station is located at an altitude of about 400 kilometers. The distance between the Earth and the Moon is 380,000 kilometers kilometers. A second objective for the mission is to conduct a laser communication test between the ship and SpaceX's Starlink satellites. But above all, once in a lower orbit, the astronauts will carry out the first commercial spacewalk to be broadcast live on the mission's third day. A second similar Polaris mission is planned after this trip, and then a planned third trip will be the first crewed flight on SpaceX's massive Starship rocket, currently under development and ultimately intended for trips to the Moon and Mars. With Polaris Dawn, Isaac Mann, the founder of payment services company Shift4, who is also a jet pilot with lifelong dreams of space travel, is making clear he is not just interested in duplicating what professional astronauts have experienced. He is seeking to advance space technology, helping to fund the development of new hardware, as well as personally exposing himself to the risks of testing out that technology where it matters most, in the unforgiving void of outer space. It's amazing to see humanity getting closer to its final frontier in space exploration. Wish the Polaris crew all the best in the upcoming mission. You are all our heroes. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.